So Laser Spot was founded in 1996, and it kind of started as a um, an accident, like so many businesses happen like that. My father was looking, uh, was really not looking for a business, but he was working for a great truckload carrier, and uh, uh, he came across this opportunity in Macon, Georgia. And what it was is what Laser Spot is: is there was a uh, drop yard for trailers. And there was this little truck going back and forth that was moving the trailers to be loaded and unloaded and just constantly doing that. And at the time, uh, we really didn't know anything about spotting per se and what it really meant. But as we found, it's basically it's an efficiency because truck drivers uh, want to come in to drop their load off and then they want to get out with a loaded trailer. They don't want to sit there at the dock. At the same time, the warehouse people and the manufacturing people, they don't know when these trailers are coming in and when they need them. So if they're waiting for a truck that's stuck on the interstate, they might shut down the facility. So by having dropped trailers there, they can move them up to the door and out of the door in a more orderly fashion. So it becomes an efficiency for the supply chain there. And that's what we do. We provide the truck, the driver, and the management and the skills there to help that supply chain. And now we're up over 550 locations, over 5,000 employees uh, throughout the U.S. Uh, and Canada. Uh, so we've made it into a really nice business with uh, sales approaching $600 million uh, for this year. Laser Spot is really the pinch point of the chain supplies. The way, way I look at it is that we are that first movement that will you know, ensure that product gets on the trailer in a timely manner, the trailer gets out of the yard and gets to the ultimate customer destination. Laser Spot is looking at uh, really a going through a big cultural change right now. What can we do to make it better for our employees to have a great experience from the time the day one they come on to hopefully they retire. Any company that doesn't put safety number one, then you're going to fail. It's just really as simple as that. We talk about it all the time. First of all, it's the morally right thing to do. Let's take care of one another. If we make that a, a value, and one of our key values is we keep each other safe. It's real simple. I mean, again, these th value statements and mission statements don't have to be real complex. It's really just a statement of the basics, and safety is as fundamental as it gets. People want safety. You know, people want to be taught safe. They may not like it sometimes, but they they want to be in a environment that they know they're cared about. They know that that safety is is first and foremost, and you wouldn't put that above any other. You know the dollar bill will say you you know you're not you're going to be safe we start every meeting every uh conversation with safety and, and it really is um, demonstrated by our leadership uh, so at, at the very top end we start with um you know the demonstrable behavior of safety and then from there it just cascades down into each of our uh, operations all the way down to the uh, the single driver level uh, so it's it's a culture built at the top but it's uh, ultimately executed at the at the driver level. You know, we uh, we put a lot of effort up front uh, when we onboard drivers uh, to give them the tools to succeed, and certainly in the uh, in the safety area, um, you know, the training and the hands-on training that the managers uh, you know use uh, to make those drivers understand what our culture is, understand what our practices are. Uh, it certainly helps. We came up with you know what we call our big six kind of the Bible we use that says, these are the safe practices you use. If you do these things every day, you'll have a great day, you'll go home very safe, and we won't have any accidents or any injuries. We, we start with three points of contact, getting in and out of the, the vehicle. Um, you know, so at any point in time, the driver will have to come in and out of the truck probably six, eight, 10 times in an hour uh, just to move the trailer. So we, we, we start with uh, three points of contact. Then the, uh, the second one that we have is, uh, is tug, tug test. So when we hook up to a, a vehicle, um, you know, we, we uh, make the connection, uh, we do a tug test to make sure the connection is, is secure. Uh, third one follows the tug test is the visual inspection. So you know, not only are we doing that mechanical pull and tug to, to, to understand that that kingpin is, uh, is you know, in place, but we're doing a visual as well, just to make sure it's a double check uh, but it but it certainly helps us uh, with with not dropping trailers. Uh, fourth one is is um, the five foot rule. So anytime we're backing up to a stationary object, whether it's coming to a trailer uh, or to a dock, we will stop five feet before that stationary object and uh, and um, just do a quick check of mirrors and look out the back door 
uh, make sure there's nothing in the way. So that's uh, you know number four. Uh, number five, we require secondary securement. So what that is is uh, you know each of the trailers that the doors when we open up the doors they all have latches or some type of chain mechanism that over the years those things wear they break uh, they, sometimes they're not even there. Uh, so we will use a, a, a secondary securement, whether it's wire or carry strap or a bungee cord, just to make sure that that, uh, that door stays in place when we're doing the movement to the dock. Because certainly swinging doors uh, are a hazard for a lot of folks. And then the, uh, the last one on the big six is, uh, um, is the, the load safety strap. So we've got a, a three foot, it's about three foot long, um, heavy duty nylon strap that we will use uh, to um, attach both doors so that when we're opening up the door, if there happens to be freight that's up against the door or potentially falling, that will only open up just in long, you know, just wide enough so that the, the driver can take a look in there to see whether or not there's a, you know, there's, there's freight that it, that's about to fall onto them. And if not, then they, uh, you know, they open up the door and, and then use their secondary securements. We're going to always focus on safety. It's number one, we want our people coming to work and going home just like they came to work. Very safe. They might be a little tireder but we want them safe.